Today, I'm talking about a game I rarely see talked about on the internet anymore because it's on Game Boy Advanced and isn't named Metroid or Pokemon. The Sims Bustin' Out is an RPG-styled Sims game with you playing as the ultimate 30-year-old boomer. The main gameplay is managing your needs and not being a complete degenerate who pisses on the street so your sim doesn't end up in jail or in the hospital. It plays like you could only control one sim, so it's like how most people self-insert when they play the sims anyway. You also need to do jobs so that you can acquire more money to pay for every single hedonistic desire that comes across your mind for five seconds. Filling your home with things that you can only admire for a few minutes and do nothing else with. Because of this, your daily routine will involve waking up at 5am in the morning to mow the lawn while playing rock music over the sounds of your lawnmower, before you go to the gym every day until 5pm to show your power lifting, which after that you go to drink and hang out with your friend Billy Harrington till you serve drinks and then go to sleep. Aside from just doing your daily routine every single day, you also need to maintain skills if you want to become the Master Mower and the Mega Hulk. You have six skills that you need to train in order to get promoted in your jobs. Cooking, mechanical, creativity, body, logic, and charisma. Cooking can be trained by reading, mechanical can be trained by fixing a tractor or doing dangerous experiments with a Tesla coil, or books. Creativity is raised through painting, guitar, and books. Logic is trained on books and computers for extra high IQ. And charisma is trained by reading self-help books and being a narcissist in the mirror. Body, a skill corresponding to how much you can lift, is trained by going to the gym and reading starting strength repeatedly until you know every single secret of the low bar squat. Reading starting strength becomes the easiest way to increase your body skill once your sim develops a brain tumor, and rather than doing presses, he starts doing crossfit maneuvers instead, turning your workout into nothing more than dangerous cardio. By raising these skills, you can get promoted in your 30-year-old boomer jobs like mowing the lawn, fishing, powerlifting, bartending, and covering classic hard rock songs. Of course, the highest paying job on the planet is bartending to some biker fetish gay porn stars. There is a perfect angle to use that will get the guy in the bottom right almost every single time when you throw a drink at him, maximizing the amount of money you make. By abusing this angle, you can get as much as $2,000 every single night serving them. You get more money doing this than you do completely destroying the powerlifting overhead press record. Anyway, let's move on to characters, the most important part of the game. This game predicted all the memes of the 2010s all the way back in 2003. The very first character you meet is a Boomer King uncle who farms all day and talks about tractors before going to bed every night at the same time and waking up at 5am. You also have a Wagecuck, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Stacy, a goth GF, a cool wine aunt, a thought, and a few others. This game also seems to love its gotcha characters as it features many including Billy Harrington redoing his biker role, Mark Wolf, Van Darkholm playing hey, a racist hey. Guido character, hey. and of course... Anyway, with the most important part of this game out of the way, let's get to the story. Your parents kick you out for the summer, since all you do is play Doom and drink carb-free Monster, and so you first meet your Boomer King uncle, who farms all day and talks about how, in his day, there was no such thing as giant roaming murder chickens before letting you go around town and get fucking destroyed by said giant murder chicken. But before he does that, he tells you to get the fuck off his couch, take all of his destroyed broken old shit into a barn to live there as chickens constantly annoy you all night and day. He then forces you to fix his broken shit, likely causing you to electrocute yourself into a coma at least once. And then, after that, he tells you his tractor is broken and forces you to fix that too. Finally, after all of that, he gets you to mow his lawn at 5am every morning, annoying every neighbor in a 100 mile radius. And this is what makes him your favorite uncle. After you're able to escape the farm, you meet an imam detective and supporter of Hillary Clinton who tells you to make friends with her or else. After you befriend Hillary Clinton, he then tells you to stop a giant gay biker orgy blocking the entire road to the rest of town. In order to do that, you need to do favors and help out Billy Harrington and then bribe all of the bikers with alcohol. 
After you do all this for the town people, your uncle then kicks you out of his barn because after his generation bought up all the housing, he now expects you to find a place for yourself in the price inflated housing market. After you move into a new place, the game then expands into where you just do chores for people forever and make fun of manlet wage cucks who can't get memberships to the gym. So before I get on to the end of the game, which is the only other part of the game that has any story, let's talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack is almost all remixes of Sims 1 music, but there is a few originals including the ultimate music for games. The pizza theme. Sure, sure. A spooky song. A song meant purely for ear rape. And a few others. The Sims 1 remakes are two rock songs from the Sims 1 radio. Girl. And then the other remakes are remixes of various build by themes from Sims 1, which is pretty comfy. Now the graphics, well, it's a sprite based isometric Game Boy Advanced game so can't really go wrong, hasn't really aged terribly since it wasn't really trying to be cutting edge in the first place, and it's all just sprites. Now I'm going to talk about the final segment of the game since no one cares about spoilers for this game. After befriending confederate ghosts and starting a rock band, the story picks up now in the final parts. Your goth GF got screwed over by Guido Van Darkholm and wants you to report his gay orgies to the Imam detective. So you go to your uncle's house, who is scheduled for the Ram Ranch special with Van. It's bondage gay website. It's all male. Oh yes, sir. Uh, uh, uh. Do you like what you see? Fuck you. The semen arsonist. And oh, then artist. get Van Double caught by the detective artist. Imam, resulting in a beheading. Your uncle is perfectly fine though, because he pays generously into the local mosques. After that, you go, fuck it, I'm going to run for mayor, and in order to do that, you need to donate $10,000 to Hillary Clinton's campaign funds, and she will assist in your elections. You will also then berate and threaten self-defense against your opponent until they quit, making those $10,000 effectively meaningless anyway. After that, you decide you want to have some fun by jumping off of a cliff and committing suicide, but a local thought tries to stop you, so you have to insult her until she cries and is begone. Because like all thoughts, she will try to ruin everyone's fun until she is emotionally destroyed by a superior gentleman. And the lead-up of all of these missions at the end is the giant surprise moment that you aren't actually related to your uncle at all and are in fact a space alien. He then locks you into a spaceship and shoots you into space, 
but then since he's a brainlet, you forgot to make sure you stayed in orbit, so you come back down anyway. It doesn't make any sense or connect in any way, but pretty good. Running for mare and then getting shot into space is an extremely coherent and great ending. But yeah, this game's story doesn't connect and it's just a bunch of gags stuck together, but it gives a very interesting feel. The next game runs with a bunch of gags stuck together in a very different way, but I don't feel like talking about that right now. I have other projects in mind first. Some of the gameplay in this game can get pretty repetitive, and you're waiting a lot of time to advance so you can scream at someone or do a specific time-related thing, but the experience and feel of the town around you is pretty good. I give it a faggot out of friend. Hey, I know I was a little late. I'm getting this done. Okay? I understand I was a little late. Because I had to switch rooms, but that's not really it. I wasn't, there was no way I was getting it done by the time I had given myself. I had never done something like this before. And honestly, I know it was a little bit too sethy. I wanted to, I, I have some ideas for next time. So it won't be too derivative of other people's stuff. It won't just be some discount bullshit. All right. I hope you at least half enjoyed it as much as you could. And have a good one.